Yeah, welcome to episode 25. Um, another duct tape episode. This time it's my fault. I think that's, we're going to have to check the record. I think that may be my, my first time ever forcing this, which just knowing the history of the podcast, that just seems a little bit like an odd fact. Like You can find it on a Twitter post where it's like odd football facts or something like that. But, Dustin's uh, remote debut. Yeah, the remote debut. Uh, clearly I'm out. I'm out where LAFC plays. I, I would have said the Galaxy, but they're uh, kind of second fiddle in my yeah. mind. I was going to say your uh, your remote uh, on location of remote is coming from a much better spot than anywhere I've ever uh, <laughs> taken it from. I'm usually tucked away in a dining room, and you've obviously got the, the old pool and mountain and palm trees in the back. So um, it's good for the pod host to get out and, you know, get some some rest and relaxation and visit the fam so yeah yeah it's been a while since i've been able to come out here with covid and everything like that so just soaking up the sun and maybe even less hot than you over there so you guys got this yeah i i'm baking in the studio right now um (laughs) which which doesn't help with you know the vibes coming into the episode anyway based on um the game that nycfc had against columbus um and I don't know, we could hop right into the analysis. I feel like there's probably a, a decent amount of things that we um, can talk about in this one. Um, but I don't know if if you have any thoughts to start about, you know, the the game that unfortunately um, us as NYCFC fans and podcasters had to uh, subject ourselves to watching. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you're relaxing, you're on vacation. That's not the game that you want to tune into. <laughs> Luckily, I mean, it was it was close up until the end, really. But, uh, you know, ultimately, we, we weren't lucky enough to come up with even a point. Um, had we gotten anything from that game, realistically, um, full, full transparency, I would have come on here and been like, yeah, we got lucky. We, we got mm-hmm. very, very lucky. Two deflected goals, um, giving up way too many counterattacking chances. Um, and this goes back to, to last week where, um, you know, we had a situation where, where it's the same thing. Our defense was giving up a ton of chances, a ton of counterattacking chances. And, um, you know, some people in the community were saying that the defense saved us. And I, I thought that the defense was what was holding us back. Um, and it just showed again this week that the defensive unit's just not, I don't know if it's Nick Cushing's tactic to, you know, if it's the tactics leading us there, if it's the players, but whatever it is, we're giving up a ton of counterattacking chances. And when you have dangerous players at the end of them, like Zella Rayon, it's like, dude, you're going to lose. And uh, we were only in the game, like I said, uh, due to the two deflected goals. So um, it, had we lost 3 0, I, I would have thought it was fair, personally. Yeah, I mean, it feels like. Columbus and Zellerion specifically like has our number like like it's a Red Bull type of situation where you know regardless of of what they've been doing in the league or period you know the players that they have on their team whenever we play them they always give us a tough game you know we obviously have the game uh in the past where Zellerion I think can two free kicks on us in one game which is like I mean how many players even score like two free kicks in their career uh so, like to do it against us twice in a game is insane um and then obviously i i kind of do agree with you that the defense was pretty shaky um and i I don't want to just limit that to uh our back line but i mean even sean who um amongst a a field of uh men's national team keepers that really had like a tough week let's say um and all of their things you know he he followed suit with them and obviously i think it it was that first zeller on goal um, that he popped on him, he kicked it, you know, right out to, I think he was trying to get it to uh, all day. And it was just so simply intercepted one pass so easily to Zellerion. And then, you know, when you have a, a guy of that class, he he placed it so perfectly, like right over Sean and right under the crossbar on that top left. And it was just like, I mean, it was a gifted chance. Like they didn't have to build it up. Like it, it was genuinely just handed to them. And, you know, it's moments like that, that, just make a game so much harder and I would assume deflate confidence to a point and, and take away any morale that you might've had when like something so stupid happens and, and can turn the tide of the game immediately. Yeah, it was, it, it was extra, it was a bummer because, you know, coming into this week, 
specifically. I mean, tomorrow we're recording this on a Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow's the the All Star game, and he definitely didn't live up to, um, you know, not only a, a, an All Star but a, an NYCFC captain performance. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't it. And obviously, like you said, uh, you know, the, the distribution was poor. The response to the to the poor distribution was poor. Um, you know, to get left foot finessed, you know, weak foot finessed by a, by a player, and it really looked like you had no chance in it. It's rough, and you know we don't want to pile on to Sean, but it was a really, really tough game where, you know, the three goals that went in were avoidable on the defensive side, but also, you know, that last man, Jed Merrick, should be in a better position. But you know, at the same time, this time last week, Sean was bailing out that defense, so you know the cards fell for him that time, and in this game, it just didn't didn't fall for him. So you know, I don't want to harp on him too much because it's it's just one game and. You know, when your defense is, is giving up that many chances, I mean, it's it's impossible to save them all. So, um, I feel like you know, it, it maybe... stings. I was gonna say, I feel like it stings extra too when, um, you know, the rest of of the guys that he's competing with, you know, for potentially a, a guitar spot. I'm I'm not sure he'll get a start, obviously, but you know, at least to to make it on the plane with some of the talent we have, when all of the rest of them do poor, and then unfortunately, like you do too, like it was, like you said, it's also like at this point now with uh, Collins getting injured in the game and we can get into, you know, that and the rumors of, of the injury and Tati leaving, Sean is now like the sole guy, um, I believe at the all-star game representing NYCFC. So it, it very much is like a let's build Sean Johnson up week. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that does happen. And I think it it's a parallel with uh, poor timing and, and poor, um, taking advantage of your opportunities for the team too because philly went out there and uh dropped points to cincinnati so it would have been a, a great opportunity to to make up some ground on them um because they're you know they're the team that we've somewhat been chasing at this point even though we have a game in hand that i think would either bring us level or a point ahead of them um you know that i think they were on like a, a five game winning streak and they were dealing with teams uh without much issue like we're talking like five zero and four nil wins and stuff so i think in, in both ways it was just unfortunately a, a bad time to kind of a bad game yeah and uh yeah like you said i think we had that game in hand i, I remember michael allen tweet basically saying you know like he has a talking crap and it's yeah we got a game we have a game in hand and we're you know we're in a good position but yeah, we didn't capitalize on it. We didn't capitalize on boosting Sean up. Um, you know, and some of the some of the chances, like I was gonna bring up the the uh, Gabby miss, the GP miss, um, mm -hmm. where you know had that been a bit a Medina or a Matriza or you know even a Santi, in, in my opinion, you would have been texting and lighting my phone up, saying <laughs> you need to get this guy off the field and. Uh, you know, so I was I was gonna check you on that uh a little bit just to say like you know that's somebody else. My phone's getting lit up and, and it's not a nice text. I, I will say in my own defense, um, this unfortunately was the first game, uh, that I did not get to watch live, and unfortunately also just because I live on Twitter essentially, when I went into uh rewatching it. I already knew that those 90 minutes were going to be dreadful because I had seen like the highlights and I had seen the reactions on Twitter and the, the uh, NYCFC group chat, you know, blowing up with some of the reactions while the game was happening. Um, so in that sense, you wouldn't have received a text from me, but I, I do agree that, you know, there are, there are players like GP when they have um, it's, it seems like, sort of like a Tiago at the start situation. Like it's kind of been all good from GP um, since he started here. And part of that is because he's, he's had limited time and he's only come in as a sub. So there's not many opportunities to do wrong and then fair play to him too. When he has come in, he's looked incredible. I mean, really almost the entire time. Um, so there's a, a rapport backing him up at least, but yeah, you can't be wandering, uh, chances like that you you really just cannot especially when you know him let's say in an opportunity um when we're looking for who can be the Tati replacement you know it's it's him versus 
Tales and, and Heber and whoever else you want to throw into the mix if, if we go farther down the depth chart. Um, but, you know, that's that's that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I say that, but he also did bring its level, um, whether that mm -hmm. was credited to him or if it was credited to Nogo. I, I haven't looked at the box score version of it, but um, yeah, I mean, he, he brought us level with his tenacity and, and just confidence to go forward. So, I mean, not that I'm going to dog on him for his whole performance, but that one specifically would have put us in a better spot and uh, made me feel more uh, a little bit better about being in that game, like being close in that game. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing I just I thought about, I saw it on Twitter, and I, I cannot remember for the life of me who had brought it up, but our, our game in hand is actually um, a game against DC that I was believe that I believe was rescheduled um, because of like Open Cup or Concacaf earlier in the season, and uh, whoever it was that called it out notably mentioned how how much tougher now this DC United team is that we have to play them a few weeks as opposed to back at the beginning of the season when, you know, it would have potentially been a cakewalk. You know, now we have new manager, Wayne Rooney. They just brought in a uh, Ben Tech, ah, Ben Tech a, um, and a more as a DP. Yeah. And, and him as well. Uh, so it's like all of a sudden, you know, so three points that I think, you know, when, when we're fans and we're on Twitter and we're defending ourselves by saying, Oh, we have a, a game in hands. So it doesn't really matter the assumption behind that is like that game in hand is going to result in three extra points. And, you know, slowly as the transfer window progressed and then closed, I mean, DC United became in a way much stronger than they were, you know, it, it, the jury's still out yet yeah, as to, you know, you could bring in anybody and they could just lay an egg for the whole season. We've seen that, you know, tons of times with millions of players across the world, but on paper, as you said, is just, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to assume that it is going to be as easy as it was, you know, back, back when we could have played it. Yeah. I, but, you know, that's, uh, you know, I would equate that to almost trying to plug the holes on the Titanic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a, that's a difficult, difficult job. And uh, if Rooney does it, if Rooney does it and, and they're relevant, uh, you know, hats off to him, but I don't. I think that's more of a you know a building block type of thing. Um, you know, we're we're gonna get to see some flashes of some good good play, and then they're gonna be, you know, same old DC making making some mistakes, and that clearly showed. I mean, in the first game, but yeah, I mean, and, and the assumption of the three points is also based off of not only of the opponent, but of, of the form that we've been in, um, and the form that we know that we can be in and and continue to stay in. So, you know, we assume the three points just because we forgot the games like Columbus can happen. Mm -hmm. And not only the the side of the coin, I just thought of, of them getting stronger. But if we had played them back then, you know, we potentially, I mean, we do. We have Tati on our roster. Um, it, the, the jury is out on this Collins thing. I've only seen, you know, rumors uh, related to like a sprained MCL, which I do my armchair uh, medical Googling and it says two days to six or eight weeks. So really, you know, who knows what what that situation could be. And I think because of the All-Star game, um, they're not pressed to release any information about it. Um, and upcoming, obviously, on the weekend, we have yeah. Inter Miami and... I'd like to say that, uh, you know, that might be another slouch game that we might be able to pick up form on, but even Gonzalo is is sort of popping off. I guess we're a little bit there, but I checked in. <laughs> what happened? I'm sorry. Oh, so I, I was just saying, so now we have uh, Miami on the weekend, and I, I would like to say that hopefully that is a uh, – a slouch game that we can, you know, get going again. But suddenly, ever since we we talked about Gonzalo um, negatively on the pod, he decided to score like a first half hat trick with one of the craziest or hardest hitting free kicks I've ever seen. So, you know, it, it's tough to see what might happen in that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it, it's a team that's just waiting to hop on a rocket and go. I mean, it's got all the talent in the world. Um, you know, a good, good manager. It's got everything that you would need for a good club. It's just, uh, 
you know, kind of a uh, MLS 2.0 old mindset that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to get your results, but it's not really going to take you that far. I'm not going to overlook Miami. I just think tactically uh, and in position for position, despite not being big names, talent wise, they're just better. They're just better. Well, like, we're just better than them right now. Um, so mm-hmm. I would take, you know, even in, even in 4 4, and I would take us over them. And um, yeah, I mean, just, you know, this is my heart. I just think that uh, I got to get out of California before I see another soccer game because I just think that being here in, in a weird way brings me back to like OG Man United days where. You know, we had Moyes as a manager and uh, the, the doom and the gloom. Yeah, just bring it's like, uh, it, you know, I watch the, the All Star game here and, you know, but it just feels like there's just a doom, bad luck that, that is with me watching a game here. So maybe I just won't watch if I'm yeah. still here, but we'll see. Yeah. It's, so, so we do have Miami. And then uh, after that, we're, back to midweeks unfortunately so it's going to be charlotte on wednesday and and it's actually pretty cool because we're going to play charlotte at home next midweek and then i I don't think we've talked about it on the pod yet but we're actually planning a vacation um together and part of it is going to be um making that long 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 12-hour drive down to charlotte um and hitting an nycfc and charlotte game uh at charlotte's home so that'll be pretty cool to experience and then in some capacity uh we're gonna try to do a episode I, I would assume like on scene not at the stadium but you know in the airbnb or in or whatever find a way to um record and talk a little bit about that experience too um so that's something to look forward to uh in september when that game comes up but um you know just looking forward to the team hopefully getting back on track against miami and getting some solid news on on collins that's not a that's not going to break my heart because, you know, he, he is my guy for sure. He's, he's the most recent Jersey. I bought one of two that I have. Um, so obviously hoping for the best for him um, because he is such an, uh, an important part of this team. And we haven't seen, I don't think that Chano and Tiago Martin's partnership really um, maybe ever, or at, at the very least not, uh, in a long-term sense where they now need to figure this out. So that'll be an interesting relationship actually in in the next couple of games to see um, how, how it goes really. I mean, especially in the defense that you've alluded to and we talked about last episode that is, you know, kind of struggling. Yeah. I think, uh, well, I'm just excited to see, you know, that partnership grow a little bit. I think, the, the AC machine just turned off, so my brain's not fully being scrambled every two seconds. But uh, yeah, I mean it, it's never good when your star center back goes down. You got to kind of, you know, not not that Chano is a duct tape duct tape piece at all. I think we've kind of been sold that dream, just with you know, copium trying to cope with the fact that we spent a DB spot on a center back. Um, but Chano is no by no means a duct tape piece. I mean, he had his injury, um that shouldn't even affect his ability to play. Um, he's a year older, but still, you know, a relatively relatively young guy in terms of just being a human being. Um, and he was on the magical run. So I believe in him to the end. It sucks to not have Collins. Um, I think a playoff run without him would be very difficult just because he's so solid and the mentality, uh, you know, that he brings to the squad. but. It's doable. We we've seen next man up in the squad before, so really I am more looking towards, you know, is Tiago able to step up and fully be, you know, that guy that that brings us together, and you know, can he kind of tave on it till the end for us a little bit if if we are to be without Collins for the remainder of the playoffs? Yeah, and maybe uh, you need to bring Ibiaga back with you. From, Dude, from California, I'll, maybe get. I'll do um, I was gonna say maybe get Ro- the Roach on the phone too while you're at it, because you know we could we could always use a, a solid CDM from time to time. Well, well, the Roach he's only thirty minutes away. Biaga, it's a little bit of a, <laughs> a hop and a skip away, but yeah. Well, um, I think that'll 
probably do it, you know. Um, it's a tough game, and hopefully Miami will be better. Um, it is going to be in Miami, so jury's out on that one. I, I feel like whenever, obviously, we're in the Bronx or at least in New York, we we always find a way to have an upper edge no matter who the team is. Um, so you guys will probably hear from us after that. Um, or we on might proper mics. In, yeah, on proper mics in uh, in this studio that we've constructed. Um, or maybe we put – we mashed together the Charlotte uh, midweek into an episode two. Um, but, you know, that will probably do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, thank you guys for, for listening this far. If you have made it, obviously it's uh, – we like when the audio sounds crispy. We spent a good amount of money to make that happen. So when when we're on the road and you guys still listen to the episodes and, and like them and talk about them, we appreciate that even more. So if you guys are here, you know, just follow us on, on Twitter. That's the best place to find our stuff. And uh, anywhere that you listen to a podcast, that's where we'll find us. So, yeah. Catch you guys on the next one.